All right, welcome back to the series where I'm unboxing some games. This one is Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game. If you are a PlayStation player, odds are you've heard of this game. It was one of the best games on the PlayStation 4. Uh, they've turned it into a board game. Uh, we're going to have some miniatures and... I'm not sure. It might, I think it's primarily card driven and you're just running around hunting the machines. If you're familiar with the video game, you'll know what that's about. If not, this is kind of a uh, dystopian future. I think Planet of the Apes style. The Earth is overgrown and overrun by these uh, giant machines. Most of the time, take the shape of dinosaurs or some other type of animal. There's some you can actually use as horses too. Anyway, let's get this thing open and see what we see what we've got. All right. First thing we've got is the uh, rather thick instruction book. Uh, probably about 50 pages long. Let's see. We've got our table of contents. An introduction to the game and the world. Beautiful art. This art like this all the way through the game. That's what a lot of the scenery look like. Okay, and here's our components. We've got our different hunters shown. We've got some encounter tiles, some dice. Those of you who know me know that I love dice. Um, several different decks that we're going to be going through and then of course the miniatures of the different guys the shell walkers the scrapper sawtooth and the watchers striders and grazers and as i understand from stuff i've seen we're supposed to be coming out with other packs with other monsters all right we get into the hunter profile cards their equipment and the weapons that they can carry armor, miscellaneous stuff, modifications, so that they can modify their weapons that they're carrying and their armor, action decks, got a freeze bomb here. You can see there's a lot of pictures in this book, so it is 50 pages, but it's not solid text walls all the way through, which is great. The hunter su hunters and suffering damage. Obviously, this is a fight, so you could be attacked back. Different condition cards. Your enemies. They're going to have their own data cards. Salvage deck, because you spend a lot of time salvaging stuff from the creatures that you kill in the video game. Setting up, all right, it tells you how to set up and start the game. Choose a quest. Choose hunters. Set up your card decks, the different phases, the tracking phase, the encounter phase. So this is, looks like you're purely just hunting in this one, which is kind of cool. That was one of the best parts of the game was just being able to wander around the world. The hunter turn, hunter activation, different actions. They can sprint, sneak, craft. Distract, have a ranged attack or melee attack. There's some free actions that you can do. Goes into detail about performing the attacks. Gives some examples. Um, attacking a component. You can attack a specific part if you're good enough to get the right angle. You can shoot their, um, their power cells right off their back. Do a lot of extra damage that way and weaken them. So you've got some trap weapons, some area of effect, and the enemy step, alert and not alert enemies. Have they seen you yet, basically? Then the alert enemies would activate. Looks like they have some mandatory and some conditional actions. They can move, how to move huge enemies. Some of them are very, very large. If there's miniatures, I'm sure we'll see with the, the turtle shell, or the shell back, excuse me. Resolving attacks, special actions, activating non-alert enemies, the maintenance step, 
ending an encounter. Again, some more of that gorgeous artwork. Then the campfire phase, the victory step. There's victory conditions for two player, three player, and four player. What happens if there's a tie, the leader token. Level up step. Okay, so you can do this campaign style. So you can level up your hunter and then go out for another hunt, I guess. The merchant step, you can buy and sell your stuff. Let's see. The hunter's call in the end of the game. So it tells you how to end the game. Alternate play modes. So there's a co-op. And evidently you can agree to trade items as you're going through. And then it tells us who our warriors are. We've got a Nora Marksman. Got a Karja Warrior. A Banuk Survivor. And an Osaram Forge Smith. These are four of the main factions in the, in the video game that you would play. And then there is a quick reference on the back of the instruction book. Which seems to be the norm these days. Uh, I absolutely love a game that offers you storage bags because if there's no real solution for uh, storing your stuff at least you can throw it in bags all right so we've got uh, we got some tiles here I'm not sure what all these are I recognize some of the symbols from playing the game but I don't remember what all they are I'm sure they're all covered in the book Decent thickness, you know, they're, they're good and sturdy. So, there's that. And then we've got, now we get into some of the big sheets. All right, here's some of our map tiles. Several other tokens, map tiles. These are trails that I'm sure are trails that you're hunting enemies on, more than likely. Another map tile. Let's see here. Pop some of them out. Um, so there's four more like this with the map tiles and other tokens that we're going to need throughout the game. All right. Okay. Oh, wow. This is a neat little insert they've got here. So... And they're taped. Give me just a second here. All right. Here's one of our, I'm assuming the player character. It's the only four human ones that I see. These are the cool ones. These are the enemies that we're going to be facing, the creatures we're going to be hunting. Really cool. The Watcher. One of the more common enemies that you would run into in the video game. Let's see if we can get into Ooh, there's a lot of cards yeah this is definitely going to be looks like a definitely a card driven game set that out of the way and we'll just deal with this yeah that's cool right there that's the shell back you want to get behind it. Their weak points were usually in the back, if I remember correctly, and from the game. Very cool stuff. You can see the size of these bases and the size they are compared to the player characters. Definitely large creatures that we're facing. Cool stuff. Really cool stuff. These guys used to give me some trouble. And trying to fight them in the game. I don't know why that one particular one did, but 
And then here's the one I talked about that in the game you could actually capture it and ride it as a mount. Pretty cool. All right. Custom dice. Got a pretty good weight. Feel like a decent quality. Nice and shiny. Not sure what all the symbols are, but we saw some of these as we were going through the book, so I'm sure they're used to resolve the battles mostly. Let's see what's on some of these smaller cards. If I can get them out. All right. Blaze, which was the fuel that was used in the game. Sparker. Yeah, these are going to be the ones that you can find and can be used for upgrading stuff. Your upgrading components. Chill water, that's how you would make something frozen. Metal shards, yeah, those were used a lot for in the crafting part of the video game. A lot of metal shards. Uh, machine cores, yeah, those were those were highly sought after. Machine lenses, more upgrade part. Oh, here's some other cards. It still breathes. You barely snatch your fingers away as the machine lurches once more to life. Return the enemy to the square it was killed in with any tokens it had gained. Oh, it comes back to life. Not quite dead yet. So, going to have to fight that one to finish it off. Ancient Vessel again. That's a, that's a coffee mug. But this takes place, like I said, in the dystopian future where the world as we know it has ended and life has started over. An ancient Necklace. Ancient Chimes. Car keys. Really cool stuff that you can go through and discover. So, yep. All right. There's the small cards. I don't know if I'm going to go through all of these decks, but we'll open at least one of them. Maybe. Like I said, maybe. There we go. Yeah, there's the Sawtooth, Shell Walker, the Scrapper, the Strider, the Watcher. See what's on the other side of these cards. Uh, it's just what happens if they're not alert. Um, the Strider, the Scrapper. Hunter within one square, it moves to the closest hunter. If not, it'll move two towards the closest hunter. The Grazer, th this would be like hunting deer. They, they're they awfully jumpy. Had to chase those down quite a bit. So, just different things that they do and how they interact with you when you get close, it looks like. Let's see what else we got. We have here in this deck. Karja Warrior. She's nimble. Looks like these are some of the things she has available to her. Yeah, and her tech tree. Being prideful. Frostbite. Greater Challenge. Nerves of Steel. Lightbringer. Okay, I guess this is movement cards, I'm assuming. I'm not sure. I have to go through and find it, figure that out. Lucky break. This hunter can reroll one die in every dice roll they make during this encounter. That's cool. Hold satchel. Choose another hunter during the next encounter. That hunter's hand size is reduced by one. Ooh. Testing your metal. Yeah, these look like condition cards that you can get. Some of them are good. Some of them are 
right on cue. Some of them are not too good and never too prepared. I don't even take an additional action. No, that one is good. Uh, taking the lead. Riding behavior. Discard this card to change the target of an enemy's attack to another hunter of your choice. Yeah. Discard this card during an attack to inflict an additional three damage. Yeah, most of them actually look like they're pretty good for you. Uh, at the start of the encounter, once all the hunters have set up, you may switch the starting position of any two enemies. Ooh. That could really mess somebody up if they're trying to track a particular animal. All right. Like I said, I'm not going to go through all of these decks. Is there anything under... Anything under here? Yes, there is, actually. Let's see what we've got here. All right. These are, look like just... Yeah, it looks like we're tracking stuff on this one. Looks like this is actually the information cards for the creatures. The Watcher. The Strider. The Scrapper. We've seen all these. The Grazer. It just gives you a really nice close-up of the artwork of what they look like. And this is what they look like in the game. Like I said, it was a really gorgeous game to play. So, that is what we've got in... Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game. I am really excited to get this, this one to the table and give it a try. Um, it is ages 14 and up, probably for the small parts. Um, one to four players in an hour to an hour and a half. So fit right in in game night. Hopefully we'll get this to the table soon. I can let you guys know what I think of it. Thanks a lot.